So how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So we now have the release of ETA Hen version 2.2b by Lightning Mods. And this is one of the most substantial ETA Hen updates we've had in a while. Lots of great features added in this new version that make it so much more convenient to just use your jailbroken PS5. Some really handy features added in this particular version that we're going to get into. I'll show you all of the main features and we'll also go through the change log at the end. But before we get into that, let me show you how to get everything updated to this new version depending on what version of the exploits you're using. So first of all, you can head to the GitHub repo to download the latest official build from Lightning Mods. Just go ahead and download the ETA Hen payload there uh, to your computer. And then of course, if you're using the web browser method to load the exploit, go on the browser, run the jailbreak. Once the jailbreak loads successfully, these browser versions get updated pretty quickly. So you can probably just run the ETA Hen option from the payload selector and that will run the latest version. If it's not updated yet, just note down the IP address of your PS5 in the box there, and then simply use a payload injector on your computer to enter that IP address on port 9021, and then just drag in your ETA Hen payload into your payload injector and send the payload over the network to the PS5 and it will load the latest version of ETA Hen. If you have the Blu-ray version of the exploit from Victorious X, then what you can do is simply just copy the payload to the root of a USB drive, or you can copy it to the data folder if you don't want to load it from the USB drive itself using something like either FTP or PS5 Explorer to simply copy the ETA Hen payload to the forward slash data folder on the internal storage. And then that way the Blu-ray drive exploit will load that version from the hard drive instead, or you can load it from the USB. Then you can simply load up the Blu-ray version of the exploit here and run either the normal jailbreak or the all-in-one option. And when it gets to the point of running ETA Hen, it should load the version from either the USB drive or the internal storage instead of the older version on the disk. And then of course, finally, if you're using the Lua version of the exploit, presumably the It's PLK version, which auto loads the payload for you, then all you have to do is go to that particular GitHub repo, download the code as a zip file, extract the PS5 Lua loader folder from the save data folder over to the root of a USB drive, open up that folder, simply delete the FTP payload that's in there and replace it with the ETA hen payload instead, and then open up the autoload.txt file and then simply delete the text for the FTP payload and replace it with the ETA hen payload instead, and then simply go ahead and save the file. Once the file has been saved, you should be all good to go. You can plug that USB into your PS5 and then of course you can also again copy it to the data folder instead. If you want to load it from the hard drive, just copy the folder itself, the whole folder to the forward slash data folder on the hard drive and then it will load that version instead. So when you go to load your Lua game and load the save file, it should go ahead and again run the new version of ETA Hen from the hard drive or the USB and that will get you up and running with the Lua version of the exploit as well with the latest build of ETA Hen. So that's how you get updated with the latest version of the exploit. So now we can take a look at some of the new features that have been added here. So if we go into the settings, you'll notice that the debug settings is now renamed to ETA Hen Toolbox. And we also have a nice little ETA Hen icon as well showing up there. So if we go into the ETA Hen Toolbox, you'll see a couple of new options added here. We've got controller shortcuts and PS5 Webman games. So if we go into Webman Games, there's nothing showing up at the moment, but this allows you to launch your PS5 game dumps or game backups directly without requiring any kind of homebrew application like Items Flow that you would normally need to use to load this or something like the, you know, homebrew launcher. You don't need to use any homebrew applications to launch your PS5 game backups now. You can just go into this menu and launch them from here. So in order to get the games to actually show up in this list, you need to either put them, if you're installing them to the internal storage, you're going to want to go into the forward slash data folder on the hard drive and then the ETA hen folder, which should already be there, and then create a games folder inside that ETA hen folder and then just copy your game dumps into that games folder and then they'll show up in this menu. If you're loading them from a USB device, then the structure will look like this. Simply create an ETA hen folder on the root of your USB drive, then a games folder inside that. And then inside the games folder, you have all of your game dump folders in there, as you can see, just like I show here. Then we can just plug that USB drive into our PS5. And if I go into the PS5 Webman game section, they all show up here. We've got the title ID along with the name of the game. And then below that, we have the file path where the game is stored, as well as the version. So the game patch that's installed is all covered there. And we can just essentially launch this and it will launch us into our game. So if I try and run this, you can see it starts to run Demon Souls right here. And we now have the game up and running here on our PS5, our game dump being loaded without requiring any homebrew application. 
which is pretty sweet. So if we head back over here to our settings and we go back to our ETA Hen toolbox, we can now play around with the controller shortcuts. So if we go into controller shortcuts, this is honestly my favorite option that's been added in here. It makes things so much more convenient to use because you can basically set up a controller shortcut which can be used to either open the cheats menu, open the ETA Hen toolbox, open the PS5 uh, games menu, or toggle K stuff, which is really, really handy. So for me personally, for the open cheats menu, I'm going to use the long hold of the share button because that's the same as gold hen on the PS4, which is what I'm used to. And then also for toggling K stuff, I'll just use a single tap of the share button because uh, it's nice and quick. And also, you know, I'm not really using the share button on the jailbroken console anyway, since we're not connected to PSN. So also for opening up ETA hen toolbox, I'll just select an option for that. And also for opening up the webman games, I'll use uh, R1 and L1. Oh, one thing to mention that was pointed out by Lightning Mods, if you're having trouble getting the shortcuts with the share button to work, make sure you head into captures and broadcasts in the settings and then head to captures and then shortcuts for create button. Make sure button mapping is set to standard. If you have it changed to easy screenshots or easy video clips, then that can interfere and mess up the shortcuts. So make sure if you're using the share button shortcuts for the controller, make sure it's set to standard mode and that should avoid those particular issues. So there we go. So if we basically hop back into our game here, which we can do by heading to the switcher and going back to game. So once I'm in the game here, if I want to open up the cheats menu, I can just hold down the share button and bam, we're straight into the cheats and I can enable whatever cheats I want. Obviously, I already have the, the cheats downloaded. If you didn't, you would just select the option to download them and then you'll have all of the cheats available. So here we can just enable whatever cheats we want. Now there has been some improvements to the cheats as well because this version of ETA Hen now includes the latest K stuff payload, which added the ability for disabling ASLR, address space layout randomization, which is useful for cheats. So a lot of the PS4 cheats that weren't working before because they required ASLR to be disabled and it wasn't. Now that ASLR is disabled with this version of ETA Hen, uh, those cheats that previously were not working, particularly for PS4 game cheats, should now be working. So if you were having trouble with certain cheats not working before, maybe give them a try now, they're more likely to work. So yeah, now we've got those cheats enabled. I've got infinite stamina. If I run around real quick, you can see my stamina bar is not going down. It's also getting a bit of uh, frame drops there. So I'm also gonna disable K stuff, which I can do by just tapping the share button. And now we have K stuff disabled. So I don't have to go digging around in the menus to access the cheats or to disable K stuff. I can just press a button on my controller K stuff is disabled, hold down a button on my controller and I can access the cheats menu. No more digging around in the settings, which is super, super handy. So just to check some of the other shortcuts, I can also just, you know, use the shortcut to open up the ETA Hen menu, uh, the toolbox, and that brings the toolbox back up. And the other cool thing is when I press circle to go back, instead of taking me back to the settings menu, it will take me straight back into the game. And then also if I want to launch another game, again, I can do my other shortcuts to open up the webman games section. And bam, we're straight on the Webman Games section. And now I can launch Devil May Cry 5. And that should obviously uh, close Demon Souls and then launch Devil May Cry. So there we go. As you can see, it's now running. So I cannot stress just how much more convenient your PS5 is to use with this configuration, with these shortcuts. Being able to disable K stuff on the fly just with a button on your controller when you're already in the game. Not having to go digging around in settings. Being able to just switch to the PS5 menu to launch another game dump from the game that you're currently in. It's just so much more convenient. So yeah, this whole controller shortcuts thing is just a huge W to me. Absolutely love it. So anyway, that's what we've got going on there. Now there are a couple of other things to mention here in this new version. So a few other things that have been added that are less noticeable. You've got the settings menu here, which used to be the utilities section. It's been moved underneath services and it's now been renamed to settings. If we go in there, we have the pause case stuff option but this has now been changed to give you multiple options so that you can pause just the PS5 only or the PS4 only or PS5 and PS4, which was added in the latest version of K-Stuff, but you can now easily switch between them here in ETA Hen. So that's a new option that's been added there. Beyond that, we also have the remote play options now has this ability to save the remote play details to the USB so it can save the account ID and the pin code to a text file on the USB drive. So that if you don't want to type it out manually when you're, you know, entering it in a remote play client to connect, you can basically just copy and paste the ID from the USB drive into your remote play client instead of typing it out manually. It will also store the account ID in its decoded hex value 
so that you can also use it to activate another you know profile or another console with the same account ID. So that's a handy feature that's been added in there. Another couple of things, we have the cheats work in progress. When you go to download or update the cheats, it will actually check to see if the repo is already up to date. So if you already have the latest cheats installed, it will not try and re-download them because that would be pointless. So it does have that added there as well. And then in addition to that, if you remove a DNS blocker from your network settings while you're running ETA Hen, because ETA Hen blocks system updates anyway, so you can kind of remove your DNS blocker when you're running ETA Hen if you're having connection problems with being able to do things like, you know, download the cheats. Well, in that particular case beforehand, it would not block the game updates, which means you could start getting random game updates happening when you remove a DNS blocker. Whereas with ETA Hen with this version, it will now also block game updates from being automatically downloaded uh, when you remove your DNS blocker. Obviously, you should still use a DNS blocker when you're not running ETA Hen because you can still get system updates that way. So now let's move on to items flow. So obviously to install items flow, if you don't have it already, you can install it through the homebrew store, which you can get from the ETA Hen toolbox. Simply download the homebrew store from there. Once it's installed, you can launch the homebrew store and then use it to install items flow itself. And that will get it downloaded onto the PS5. So once you have items flow all downloaded and updated, we can run the latest version here. Now there's been a few updates and fixes in this version of items flow, but the main feature that's been added here is going to be the shortcuts feature. So there's a shortcuts feature that's also been added into items flow. If we press the options button here on our controller, we can head to ETA Hen home menu shortcuts. And if we press X, we have the ability to install a cheats media shortcut. So we'll add that. So it's added ETA Hen media shortcut. Then we can also install the games media shortcut. And then finally, we can also install a browser media shortcut. And when we select this option, it will actually give us a web address that we can go to. So this is creating a web browser shortcut and it will automatically go to whatever website we put in here. So let's just use Google as an example here. So we'll go to google.com. So we'll just put that in there and we'll say done. And that will create our media shortcut. So now if we just exit out of items flow here and head to the media section, we can see the shortcuts have been created. So if I go to ETA Hen Cheats, it takes us straight to the Cheats section. If I go to Webman Games, it should take us to our Games section to launch our games. And then finally, if we go to our custom browser shortcut we created, it should take us to the web address we put in there, which was Google, and it takes us straight to Google. So yeah, pretty handy feature there. You don't really need to kind of, you know, manually look for a specific shortcut for an exploit host or anything like that. You can just put in the web address and items flow and then create the shortcut that way to whatever website you want and it will create it there. So yeah, some more handy shortcuts that have been added in this version of items flow. So let's take a quick look at the change log to see if there's anything else we missed, any smaller things that have been added here. All of these new additions here, we also have the option to disable the toolbox auto start, which is now included in the rest mode options in the ETA Hen toolbox in the settings, as well as in the just regular uh, toolbox menu. So you've got it in the rest mode settings now as well. So some notable updates and fixes here. We've got PS5 debug updated for 6.xx support. We've got ETA Hen will now attempt to restart the home menu if loading the toolbox fails. Updated items flow self-decryptor for 7.xx firmwares. Improved ETA Hen startup time by 1 to 2 seconds. Updated and improved the light mode. And then here is also the update list for items flow as well. Again, the main feature added is the shortcuts that we covered. There are a few other fixes and improvements that have also been added in this particular version. So all in all, a really fantastic update there from Lightning Mods. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.